we are going to Copenhagen to meet um, Chris Potts. So you're not only an IT architect, you're also a novelist. It would be my privilege to say I was an IT architect these days, but that's something I left behind some time ago. Uh, I concentrate with people on the entire architecture of their enterprise, in which of course IT plays a part, but what we're looking at is how their investment in architecture, uh, in the skills that an architect has, but also the architectural investments in their, in their portfolios. How does that connect with their performance as a business? And usually it's about changing the way they invest in architecture, um, whether IT or not. So I have similar experience that you really have to start with the uh, business goals and the business strategy and, and try to take that down to something that can be implemented as architecture. That's right. The, the, the bit that joins it all together is we have our business goals and then to achieve those we're going to invest in some changes. So we need to know what our goals are for investing in change. And then some of those goals don't relate to architecture, some do. So a good thing that architects can do is we can, we work out which goals relate to architecture and which don't. Hmm. And we know those, then we can start investing in specific changes that change the architecture of the enterprise into what we want it to be. So there's the join between strategy and architectural investments are investment goals. But, but in these days where the, the architecture and the IT is like the operating system of, of any business, mm. is there really any goal that is not related to uh, uh, I suppose you get, what I've been talking about today is probably worth playing back to you a little bit. The operating system of your business is the market in which you operate. That's what makes your business work. So I've been talking today at uh, the university about market architecture mm -hmm. and how that relates to enterprise architecture and business architecture. So uh, it's the market that makes your business work. So that's what I've been talking about today. And it, it's there, the, the there operating system. Yeah. External operating system in the form of the market, but there is also an internal operating system. But that, yeah, you're right. It, but that can only function if it matches the external operating system that is the market. So the most important thing that architects need to, to understand and help other people understand is how does the market work? Mm -hmm. And how is that changing? Because it's essentially the operating system in which our enterprise sits. And then there's the internals of the enterprise and they also, that, that again is where we have to make sure it matches the market. So today has been an interesting journey I think for me and other people as we start to consider the, the question of what's the architecture of your market because that's the effect of your operating system. But if you look in an organizational theory book from even from the 50s, yeah. or th that's what they'll say. Of course. That, that the, the organization and complexity of your, of your company must match the organization and complexity of the market. Absolutely. So therefore, the, that's why I say, and it's, it's clearly not a new idea. I think we're still learning how to apply it in the areas of enterprise architecture, that the, the market has an architecture and we can understand how that's structured today, how it's changing, and that's what makes our business work. And I know it's not a new idea, and, and actually some of the old ideas are the best ideas. Um, some of the ideas that we're playing with at the moment in businesses, artificial intelligence comes from antiquity, uh, cloud digitalization comes from ideas in the 1950s too, and so on. It, just because it's an old idea doesn't make it Still, mm, uh, an old that, idea. That, that make, an old idea isn't right? an old idea necessarily. It's just yes. it, it takes time for people to figure out how that relates to something called enterprise architecture and to business architecture. And th therefore, interesting. The, the question is: the operating system of your company is the market. That's mm -hmm. how it works. And then, then you go, you're quite right. You have to match the the way your 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 company works to the way the market works. If you get out of sync, then the market's still operating. Um, and you need to change the way your business is operating. So, so w what's the usual situation when companies ask for you to mentor their architecture and so on? Okay, it's, it's going back to the question of investment. Is um, We invest in architecture as some skills that we invest in with some people, enterprise architects, business architects, and so on. And just like any investment, we want to know what value we're getting for that investment. And it can be very hard for people because architecture is a concept. Um, it, whether it's buildings or gardens or enterprises or businesses, architecture is a concept. So we're investing in a concept. So we want to know what value we're getting. So I help both the executives that are doing the investment and the architects they're investing in to figure out what's the best value they can get 
for investing in architecture in their particular enterprise. So uh, looking at companies where I've been, I've seen that there are kind of two ways that you can go wrong in architecture. Okay. So one is that you kind of, uh, maybe you do the, the, the motions right, right? You have, you have mm. the tools yeah. and you have all the lists of integrations that's and whatever, right. yeah. uh, but that's kind of all you have. Right. So, so you're, you're going through the mechanics, but it's not really architecture. No, I, architecture is about influencing what other people do. It's about collaborating with other people because architects design something that other people build and use. So if it's only about the mechanics of doing architecture, if I can put it that way, mm. that's unlikely to work because it's about collaboration, it's about influence. So when I work with people, if, if the architects need help or other people need help to collaborate around architecture, then we can figure out how they collaborate yeah, how they so collaborate better and what value that would produce. So, so it's, a, it's about being better at bringing and showing value of architecture to whoever you are collaborating with. And that's how you're going to be able to influence them. It's like that. I think the people investing in architecture, whoever that is, it could be the chief information officer, it could be the chief executive, chief financial officer, they have to see the value on their terms of investing in architecture. Mm. Um, I suppose if we're talking about things that can go wrong, is when architects are talking about the value that they deliver, but the people listening who are investing don't recognize that value. It's got to be done the other way around. We have to see it from the position of the investor who's investing in the architects. What are you doing for what, me? What value do they get from their investment hmm. that's worth having an architect for? So the other thing, uh, way I've seen architects go, or one other way is, is just what you say is that they're excellent architects, yeah. but people don't listen to them. Then, then, unfortunately, they're not excellent architects. Uh, well, but they, I know they, it's hard. They have, I know the, it's hard. They have the knowledge. I know, I they're know really that's smart hard. people. They have all the artifacts. They have the right ideas, but no one is listening. And I, it's hard, I know, but there's an aspect of architecture then they need to get more excellent at. They may be excellent at the technicalities of architecture, but this is about collaboration and influence. So that is where we have to be particularly excellent. And so that's the excellence we're looking for. People are technically excellent, who could then be excellent at collaborating and influencing people. So a third way that I've seen that, that people kind of do mistakes in architecture okay. is that they have the influence, they have the tools and everything, that is all correct. But they get stuck on a certain principle and say that, well, all this must be that. Okay. Uh, we, this is our principle and we stick with it, okay. even if it doesn't make sense in this context. Right. Because on well, average, it makes sense. Okay, I, people who do strategy and architecture and investment are used to working with principles, mm -hmm. plural. And the difficulty for all of us is faced with a particular situation, um, we may find our principles are in conflict with each other. Mm -hmm. So one principle wouldn't be enough, it will, it's bound to go wrong. But if you have just the right number of principles for a strategy, architecture, investment, and so on, and then you're faced with a particular situation, you've got to figure out how best to apply those principles then. And if you remember what's of value, <laughs> then that helps you choose the principles that or we'll even here. choose a new principle. Yeah, um, as long as it's a principle. Oh. I mean, principles are usually sort of basic facts or very, very strong beliefs. Mm. And they're usually borne out by a proof in practice that they are worth pursuing. Uh, I think um, if, the, if we're struggling with the principles we've got, maybe it's our way of putting them across. Or maybe, I suppose, in the end, we're following the wrong principles. But truthfully, I carry principles around with me, which are deep beliefs I have about various things. And it's unlikely I'll change them very often. I suspect the same for you, it's pain for everybody. I read in, in the uh, Swedish uh, medical journal yeah. that the, uh, the uh, sick leave rate of doctors in Sweden have gone in about 10 years from 2% to 5% to 10%. Okay. And, and this isn't because the people are different. It's because the healthcare system have changed right. with new public management and yes. so on. So, so suddenly, uh, a lot of people are finding themselves in a situation that is where it's very hard to be successful. Okay. I think that's an interesting analogy for enterprise architects. Is that the world of enterprise architecture is itself evolving, and what I learned um, 20 years ago. In fact, here in Copenhagen, my first course in enterprise architecture is still valid. But if I tried to apply it today, then things would be difficult for me. What I think th that question suggests is that at all times, 
I need to and the people I work with need to match what we're good at with what the challenge is. Mm -hmm. And the challenge will be the challenge. So hence that matching helps us be the right person for the job at the time. But, and but, sometimes but we have to acknowledge that somebody else is the right person for the job, particularly in architecture, that happens a lot. And we just need to keep making sure we find those challenges that we can face, that we are good at. And, and, and sometimes we create situations where it's very hard to be successful, no, no matter how good you are. Okay. I don't know if you've got an example that I can think of. There was a, uh, a global survey of researchers that right. found that uh, researchers uh, in Germany were more successful, more confident than researchers in Britain yep. because of the financing system. Okay. Because in, in, in Britain and many other countries, you always right. have to compete for funds and so on. Right. Whereas in Germany, if you, are, if you have tenure, you have tenure and there's yeah. no problem. Yeah. Uh, and that means that they are more confident on doing good research sure. and so on. So, so that, that is kind of a, where you have through organization management, call it architecture, you have created a, a situation which is more or less inducive to success. I see what you mean, I think, is if, if we're trying to be successful in the way that used to work and the world around us has changed in some way, if you like the architecture of the market has changed in some way, and which is sort of what we've been talking about today at ITU, is then it's up to us architects to, to understand what has changed and to keep in tune with what's changing and continue to be good at what we do um, and, and to value the changes that are happening. Um, we will keep being the right people for the right job if we do that, definitely. Um, and if, if that's what we do, then th that stress that, by your reports, is causing people to go off sick more, we will experience less than that, if you like, we, we, if we stay in tune as best we can. Because um, you know, you know, any, any form of architecture moves with the times. It has to. Um, you can just look back and think, well, we know that architecture itself is changing all the time. So, so and if I, if I was still trying to design uh, enterprises in the way I did 20 years ago, you can tell that I've, I've got something I need to learn again, something I need to learn again, to stay as the right person for the job. Uh, I, definitely, it's, been, it's become much more important to kind of sell your ideas, to, to influence. It's not going to be automatic. No one is going right. to believe you based on a badge you have. I think if, if I was to try and sell my ideas based on what I learned here in Copenhagen 20 years ago, you're right. Um, in some ways, the ideas sell themselves. In, in architecture, the ideas sell themselves. Um, that's, that's, that's what happens. And as the ideas sell themselves, then we have to be prepared to act on whatever people want to do with the ideas we've offered them. And that's where, again, it can, it can get easy or difficult, depending on if we're happy with people to do what they want to do with the architectural ideas we've given them. It, it is a proven practice of decision making that you should always have fully three fully developed options before you choose. At least three, yeah. At least, At least three, three yeah. uh, minimum three. Minimum three, I know. Be because otherwise you're not going to be able to make an unbiased choice. That's right, that's right. And so that's why in, in architecture people have design competitions. Um, and each architect is likely to submit one design, not three. Mm. So as architects we have to get used to being the wrong architect sometimes and be prepared to acknowledge that somebody else is the right architect sometimes and work with them, or if, it's, if we're not actually part of the organization, we can find out where we are, the right architect. That's really important. That's how we get valued. So, so how long do you usually engage uh, in, in a mentoring uh, capacity with okay. a company? Okay, the shortest is half an hour, and the longest has been eight weeks, without a break. Mm -hmm. But what I do is, is very high-paced, high-impact stuff, uh, in which I have to make sure that we've made a difference in a very short time scale. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, you're not a believer in drip feeding one change after another, after another, over a long period of time? I think that's, I mean, I do work on and off with the same people over a period of years, but each, each initiative is very short and we see how that turns out. Mm -hmm. And I, that may be all I, I am there for, one initiative. But I have worked with some clients now for many, many years, sometimes with gaps of many years. And it's not really about drip feeding, I see what you mean. It's more about when there's something worth doing, we'll do it. The rest of the time, we'd be trying to find something to do that mm. I'm not appropriate for. I'd there, be the wrong person is, in the building. There is a lot of business as usual, of course, Absolutely. that has to take place between all the uh, dramatic improvements. I mean, if you go back to what we're saying about the right architect for the right job, I'm the same. Is, is there's plenty of things that people might want to change about their enterprise where somebody else would be better than me 
or I would be better than someone else. And we have to be prepared to take that on our shoulders as architects and know that sometimes we're the right person and sometimes we're not. So you, you've written some books, uh, both? I've, I have. I've written a, a trilogy of three business novels. So it's a trilogy. Um, I think business novels are an interesting medium in which to express things. And there are plenty of business novels around. I think at the moment mine are still the only trilogy of business novels. I think so. In which the same story carries on through three books. Three, some of the same characters recur. And so the middle one, which is called Recreation, is about recreating enterprise architecture in a particular enterprise so that it works. Um, the whole trilogy is our hero, if you like, is an enterprise architect called Simon. Mm -hmm. Um, in the first story, he gets it all wrong and disappears from the story for most of the time. Mm -hmm. So that's what can happen to you. Yes. In the second book, which he uh, narrates... Stuck in the ivory tower. Or something, or something. You'd have to read it to find out. But the second <laughs> book, he actually tells the story and he, he gets to be with the right company in the right place with the right chief executive. And, and he basically recreates himself as an architect who can really have influence and really make a difference. And the third book is what happens to him and the people around him when they take it that one step further into enterprise investment, where architecture is part of a bigger picture of how we invest in change. So, uh, yeah, thanks for asking. It's, um, it's a the, as far as I know, the world's only trilogy of business novels called the Fruition Trilogy, after the name of the so first very, one. Very, very interesting. We'll put Thank links you. to that. Um, and how to reach you? Uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. Yeah, all those things. Got a website. Yeah. Just, just find me. Very interesting. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you.